Hello and welcome back to Spartan Student 9. Today we're going to be going through tutorial number 7 which is called Spectra of Organic Molecules. As always to get to the tutorials you'll go to the activities menu up at the top right click tutorials and then today we are on this seventh tutorial Spectra of Organic Molecules. You're going to go ahead and click that and open a PDF, which I already have open in another window. So without further ado, we are going to get started by building, oops, by building methyl formate, which I'm going to do like this. Okay, so we've got methyl formate built, and what we're gonna do is set up an EDF2 calculation. So we're gonna switch this theoretical from omega B97XD to EDF2. We're gonna check the IR box, and we're gonna run this calculation. And I am going to come back to you once this one has completed. Alrighty, so that one's just completed. What we're gonna do now is click the spectra panel and I'm going to add the calculated infrared as well as the experimental. And I'm gonna either scroll over these different peaks like this or add the table and then you can click through them with the check boxes. There's our max another large peak and you can see that there's a pretty good correlation but as usual not a perfect match between the calculated and experimental data so what I'm going to do now is actually save a copy of this file we're going to call it methylformate d3 and I am going to exit out of the spectra panel click properties and then I'm gonna click on one of these methyl hydrogens we're gonna change its mass number to 2 deuterium so we've got these hydrogen isotopes deuterium on each methyl hydrogen and we are going to run the same calculation on this molecule and you'll notice that your experimental might still be there but the calculated has actually disappeared. I'm going to get rid of the experimental for now and close this and I'll come back to you once our calculations completed. Should only take a few seconds. Alright so calculation has completed. We are going to head into the spectra panel again and add the calculated IR. I'm going to add the table as well and what I'm going to do is open the methyl formate that we were looking at before and add this panel and this uh, calculated IR and this table and then we can compare the values that were calculated in this table versus this table and you'll notice several differences. Um, now the easiest to notice is a one inverse centimeter difference between the deuterium, the uh, deuterated uh, methyl formate, and the original methyl formate that we were working with. So what I'm going to do now is close out of this and we're going to move on to an NMR spectrum calculation for one methyl indole and I am going to build that in 2D like so. Click benzene, double click, click cyclopentane, double click on this bond, and then I'm going to click nitrogen. I'm going to replace this carbon with a nitrogen. I'm going to select carbon and add a double bond here and a methyl group here. Clean that up bring it into 3D, you'll see we've built one methyl indole, but we want to run a NMR calculation on this. So instead of checking IR this time and changing this, we're going to leave this and, and, and check NMR. I'm going to submit this and come back to you once this one's completed. All right, so that calculation is just completed. We're going to go ahead and open the spectra panel again. 
but this time we are going to add the hydrogen shifts and this is going to be with no coupling constants so you'll see each one of these corresponds with one hydrogen and there is a triple peak here that corresponds with the methyl hydrogens and if we add the experimental data here then we can get a comparison between what we calculated and what's going on experimentally. Okay, next thing we're going to take a look at is the calculated hydrogen shifts with coupling constants. So you'll notice that there's this triple peak with the three bonded hydrogens as well as these down here. Alright, so I am going to close out of this and we're going to move on to the 13C NMR spectrum of cytosine. And so cytosine I'm going to build in 2D like so, cyclohexane, little rotation, make these into double bonds. I'm going to go like this, 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 and this to add an adjoining hexane ring. And then I'm going to add a methyl group here and here. And I'm going to bridge these together by adding a nitrogen. And the last thing I'm going to do is add oxygen. Oh, can't forget to change this carbon to a nitrogen and add these upward wedges along this bond and this bond. Clean that up, head into 3D, and you'll see this message about chirality. Luckily, we got ours right, so nothing to worry about here. This is cytosine. And we are going to set up a calculation for NMR again and click submit. I will come back to you once our cytosine molecule has returned. All right, so that calculation has completed. We're going to take a look at the experimental spectra for the 13C shifts. And then we're going to take a look at the calculated right after. Alright, so each one of these lines will correspond with one of the carbons, as you can see there. Whether you click on the experimental line or the calculated, you'll see the corresponding carbon with this sort of target going around it. Alright, so moving on, we're going to close out of this and we are going to sketch the endo and exo isomers of 2-methylnorbornane. So I'm going to do that here like this. Oops, forgot we still had this selected. Right, and so first I'm going to do the endo, and then I'm going to do sketch new and do the exo, like so. I'm going to bring these into 3D. We've got an endo seems that that didn't go properly so what I'm going to do here is use the 3d builder to fix it I'm holding the delete key and deleting this we've got our norbornane we're going to add our methyl carbon let's check again so this one 
All right, looks like we've got the endo, so we need to add the exo. Mm. Oops, there we go. All right, so we've got our exo and endo stereo isomers now, and we are going to click on the name and replace all of them. So both of these will be replaced with the calculated versions from our SSPD. And what we can do is click on the spectra plot and add the calculated NMR shifts. And you can get over to the methyl carbon and we see a shift of 17.9 there and on this one we see a shift of 21.8 so somebody would make an assignment using these shifts to be able to say okay all of these all uh let's see one two three four seven of these are the same but there's one shift that's different just like there's one carbon that's different and make the assignment that with the 17.9 shift, that must be the endo, and the 21.8 shift, that must be the exo stereoisomer. All right, so I am going to close out of that. And so the last thing that we are going to look at today is the UV visible spectrum of indigo. So there's some background information on UV visible spectrum, which is new in Spartan student version nine, um, that you're gonna wanna read through. And then once you've gotten through that, you're gonna wanna build your indigo. So I am going to sketch that here. nitrogens, the oxygens, and we should be all set. Okay, we've got our indigo there. So we are going to set up this time, instead of EDF2 or Omega B97XD, we're going to use B3LIP, and we are going to run a UV-Viz calculation on this. So I will come back to you once this has completed. All right, so now that that calculation has completed, what we're gonna do here is take a look at the calculated UV spectrum. And you can compare that with calculated or you can get at this information here. And as you can see here, it looks like the max happens somewhere here between 500 and 600, and that corresponds with this. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. Um, in the next tutorial, we're gonna be looking at flexible molecules, and we'll see you then.